in studio for a little bit is, and I apologize to him in advance, <laughs> United States Senator Dr. Bill Cassidy. Aaron's Doc- crazy today. Dr. Bill, just for your own benefit, don't look that way. I'm bi- the, Bill, her I'm up. End, her end of the table is like Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. I'm mad at, I'm mad at Bill today. You're like, you're I'm like, mad at him uh, today. what was it, Lot or whatever? Don't look back. You'll turn into a pillar of salt. Bill, Wait, Bill. If, if she's a one-person Sodom and Gomorrah, how do you not look? <laughs> Bill, you have on a red tie. What is wrong with you? Oh, you're see, right. Oh. What is wrong? You've got to get rid of that. See what I Can mean? Can I cut it in half? Oh Do me a God. favor. Do you mind if I cut it off? Brian, go look at my blue suitcase, and you'll see a tie <laughs> in the front of it. Will you bring me that tie? There's no red allowed. No, this believe me. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> my assistant's going to get my new tie, and you're going to see it on uh, a face cam. Can, we can are I going... cut that tie off? I like they used to do it Don't a worry. Lot. That tie will cut be different that. by the time this okay, interview's good. over. <laughs> we will have on video this morning via Keel's Facebook page a United States senator <laughs> <laughs> He's taking off his red tie. I love this man. You're totally with me. I'm totally with you. I didn't even think about it this morning. So before we get to serious stuff in the next segment, how you been? What you been doing? Traveling or anything? Um, we've been traveling the state. Had a fantastic uh, 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 time in Monroe yesterday. I had an economic development luncheon, uh, trying to figure out how we can bring more prosperity to North Louisiana. I uh, was in Plaquemine, Louisiana the day before, and... Um, uh, just had a pastor say, and it's a great, great prayer. He says, you know, the stuff we talk about creating jobs for others has eternal consequences. And you think about that. Uh, my family moved to Louisiana because my dad wanted to sell insurance to people working in the petrochemical industry. Uh, and for my life, it's been totally different. So anyway, it really does have consequences. So it's been a great week. I've enjoyed the people of Louisiana. You're going to the game on Saturday? I, I, I'm almost hesitant to ask because... Even mentioning the upcoming Alabama LSU contest makes Aaron start to sweat. So you going to the game Saturday? I'm going to the game. Had four tickets, and I could have sold two of them. And I thought, wait a second, who's going to buy them on StubHub? Some guy from Alabama. By the way, my wife, <laughs> my wife's an Alabama grad. Oh boy! And Seri- I used to, wait, 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 stop. Seriously? Uh, yeah, I used to tell folks on the campaign trail, what do you call a woman from Alabama who marries a guy from Louisiana? She's clearly a social climber. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're, you're going to tour the airport here. Some big money's being spent at our regional airport. What are you looking forward to seeing? What does it mean for Shreveport Bossier? Lower fares, we hope? Lower fares, but economic development inevitably is somewhat tied to air service. You're in the shadow of the Almighty here. People will drive over to DFW just because, my gosh, you get all these direct flights. For Shreveport to continue to fulfill its potential, to kind of reach its potential, you need better air service. Um, so, so, And your airport could have some upgrading, just being honest. And so what we're trying to do is get some federal funding down here, which is available for all, airport, for all airports across the country, so why don't we get it here, and upgrade that airport, again, to make it better, hopefully cheaper fares, but also hopefully some economic development. United States Senator Dr. Bill Cassidy is with us. If Matt were here, we could go to break. No, he said he's, he's got to let his guy back in because he's getting him a new tie. I know. It's important. A new cravat, as it were. <laughs> I've got to ask you a, a little bit about the caravan because I know you're keeping, you're keeping an eye on that. You're watching what the president is saying. Uh, w- was that a political ploy? You and We talked about this a while back. Do you still think that a little? I do think that. I mean, the, the, somebody is putting up the money. There is food and water required for that. Somebody is exploiting vulnerable people in Honduras and Central America to come up here. Uh, That is also important uh, to understand. And their timing is to try and drag it out before the election cycle. Again, let's not be naive. So all that said. (laughs) We hate to get way off track. The tie. It's an LSU Tiger tie. There you go. It's more than an LSU Tiger tie. It's like one of those things you only wear uh, on game day, (laughs) but uh, why not? We appreciate your uh, your placating Aaron is the only phrase. Tell you what, we'll take a quick break. More with Dr. Bill. We'll get back to the caravan, and I know you want to talk opioids and opioid crisis and how your continued efforts to help people across this country who are dealing with that addiction how's that going especially legislatively 641 it's 1017 fm 710 keel the latest traffic here's ruben 1017 fm and 710 keel robert j wright and aaron mccarty jack spring electric shock buster button so far unused but trust me the day is early in studio for a little bit is dr bill cassidy united states senator 
having changed his tie <laughs> to, in Aaron's mind, something a little more appropriate. I got to tell you, for LSU and Alabama this weekend, if, if you're not watching on the Keel YouTube channel or the Keel Facebook page where the video is streaming, yeah, Matt's going to lean in and get a great photo of that. We'll put the pictures up at keelnews.com later. Purple and gold tiger pattern. Oh, and yeah. down toward, he's got the tiger eye. I have oh, the tiger man. down toward the. Before we went to break, we were talking about the caravan. And you and I had talked about, uh, about this rather on the radio before a couple of times. In my mind, when 10,000 people, 7,500 people, I tend to think, think it's probably more, when that many people show up at your border, that's an invasion. That's a civilizational jihad, for lack of a better term. Am I wrong? Well, I'm not going to quite put it that way because, let's face it, some of those folks are desperate, they're vulnerable, and the American people have always been very, very generous to vulnerable people. Uh, my family came from Ireland a couple generations ago because there was nothing to eat in Ireland. On the other hand, I think how Trump is handling it. What I saw today, Trump has said, unless you come to a border crossing, you're not going to be given refugee status. What happens on the border is that folks come across in the desert when they are arrested by the Border Patrol. They have been coached by attorneys exactly what to say in order to get refugee status. Now, that's gaming the system. Let's have you come through the border crossing, and if you come through the border crossing, you actually have attorneys who can question you to see whether this is just something you've been coached in or whether it's something which seems to be accurate. And so I think the president's trying to strengthen our hand against fraud. Birthright citizenship. The president is, is threatening his own executive order to change. It depends on whose legal opinion you, you, you happen to go along with via the 14th Amendment, the Constitution of the United States. Your thoughts? Clearly, the 14th Amendment was meant to make sure that folks re recently freed from slavery would have citizenship. Clearly, that's what it was about. So the question is now, can we apply it to anyone who has been born here? I've also read different legal opinions. The fact that you read different legal opinions tell you that there is a legal opinion in support that this was only for those who were emerging from slavery. It should not apply to those who it should not apply to those who come here from China or the Middle East. Uh, they call it birthright uh, tourism. Yeah, U.S. birth tours. Yeah, uh, just to have a baby and then to leave. That is, again, gaming the generosity of the American people, and I think that needs to be changed. By the way, y'all probably heard that video of Harry Reid in 1993, mm -hmm. Harry Reid saying, this is nuts, we shouldn't be doing this. A country that would give this kind of birthright citizenship can only be described as insane, his words. Yes, totally. So, I, uh, again, I think the president is right to take this on. I always tell folks, if you want a president who will break eggs, this guy will go by a carton of 18 and turn them upside down and hit them with a hammer. The, the president signed a bill on drug transparency. It kind of got buried last week because we had the bomb crisis and all that. You've been working on that a long time. The, the, is this going to lower my cost? That's what matters to me, Senator. Totally. So this is about, by the way, this started because Louisiana pharmacists came to Washington, D.C., and they visited others as well, pharmacists from elsewhere, but they came to my office, and they said, listen, under contract, if, if Aaron McCarty comes to see me, and the contract says that I can't tell her that it's cheaper for her to pay cash than to pay her insurance copay, I can't tell her to save money by paying cash. I am working for the insurance company, not for Aaron. He's just picking you. Mm -hmm. And so I mentioned this to a fellow. He goes, yeah, I went in to buy my Lovenox, and it was going to cost me 190 bucks copay. I just happened to ask, what if I pay cash? 70 Wait, I'm saving 120 on a single prescription? Yes, he pays cash. Uh, um, uh, the president, I put up and others put up a law that would outlaw these gag clauses, the president signed it into law a week or two ago. It is now illegal for the contract to say that you can't be on part of the on the side of the patient. So I I'll be I'll be told when I go get my prescription, hey, it's cheaper if you pay cash. Well, you may you may want to ask. Okay. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, ideally, the pharmacist would look at the bill because the pharmacist can tell it, and she would say, you know, Aaron. It's going to be cheaper for you to pay cash. I mean, significantly, 120 bucks, perhaps, and maybe 15. But I can tell you, there's in aggregate a heck of a lot of money that consumers will save because of this. It still sounds to me, though, like drug prices are still out of whack, and we can still do more on that front. 
There is so much more, and if you look on my website, cassidy.senate.gov, I have a, um, a eight page bill. It's but it's re- it's eight pages, but you can read it. Called "Making Healthcare Affordable Again." Guess where we got the title from? Anyway, uh, "Making Healthcare Affordable Again," and a lot of it's about drugs. And I can tell you, the administration is implementing a lot of it. Uh, I, I just love it because they're looking at it and they're saying, "Huh, Bill Cassidy." Let us just say publicly, Cassidy has this on his website. We like the idea, and we're implementing it. And I'm honored, but I'm also pleased because it's going to be lowering costs for American uh, Americans. United States Senator Dr. Bill Cassidy, I know you got a lot of other appointments this morning. We appreciate your stopping by. But before we let you go, a awesome tie. Um, What's the score of the game tomorrow night? That was be? my question. Yeah. Does LSU cover? Because the spread's 14 and a half. Oh, LSU covers. And who wins? You know, I bleed purple and gold. Uh, I'm going to say go Tigers. Ooh, yes. Thanks for bringing an extra tie. And thank, you for, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for stopping by. Dr. Bill Cassidy, United States Senator Bill Cassidy, always a pleasure. Thank you. 651, it's 1017 FM, 710 Kia.